Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to this session of the River and Machine Learning uh, Lunch Seminars. Today, we're going to have our colleague, uh, João Santos, uh, presenting his work on multilingual news clustering, which is, a, um, apart from its scientific relevance, is also an important topic for us here at Privera. Uh, João uh, is a research scientist uh, at Privera, currently working on applications of natural language processing for fact checking. He obtained his master's degree from, uh, in computer science from Instituto Superior Técnico, and his uh, master's thesis was focused on multi agent conversational systems. Uh, João's research interests include dialogue systems and narrative extraction from text. Um, thank you, João, for your availability, and please, you can start whenever you want. Thank you, Diogo, and thank you for having me. Uh, so today I'll be presenting simplifying tolling one clustering through projecting uh, from a shared space. Uh, so without further ado, let's uh, begin, uh, beginning with the motivation for uh, our work. So uh, for starters, what exactly is uh, news clustering? So news clustering uh, is the task of organizing uh, news documents and articles into clusters of news in order to uh, compose a story. Uh, why should we care about it? Um, so following emergent news stories in real time uh, is often uh, crucial to make decisions, for example, of the uh, political and uh, economic kind. Uh, to give a specific example, a company may be interested in uh, keeping track of uh, the um, uh, news related to their, their um, market competitors. Uh, and this task of uh, following news stories is very difficult to perform manually, given the sheer amount of uh, news sources and possible languages that uh, the news may be published in. Uh, and so there has been a growing demand for systems capable of automatically uh, um, organizing articles into uh, new stories. Um, so the Monetary platform uh, is a, a, a real-time cross-lingual uh, Colombian one uh, platform developed by, by Privetum with the goal of aggregating, categorizing, and summarizing content from uh, all over the world. It is also being used in the summer project for the task of monitoring. And uh, here, uh, each of these squares, you can see a sample of the system storylines. So each of these squares corresponds to, uh, to this cluster. So most of them are currently previewing the, the picture corresponding to the, to the main news article. Uh, and a user can search uh, and filter the news clusters according to various parameters, such as the language, the category of the news cluster, which you can see right here, where you, for example, in the memos where you can see politics, uh, news clusters are also aggregated by, by category in this case, uh, or if it contains certain people or if you want to see um, one of these new clusters in detail, you can uh, click on them and then it will show you the the, uh, the news feeds corresponding to, to that cluster and also um, uh, a summary automatically generated for this news cluster. So this is also one kind of application that this, uh, uh, this kind of task has. Um, so uh, regarding the background of this problem, uh, previous approaches for this problem date back to the year 1998 uh, with the DACPA sponsored uh, topic detection and tracking task. Uh, and uh, news clustering systems uh, more recently can be divided essentially into two categories, uh, batch clustering and online clustering. Uh, well, batch clustering is characterized by uh, being the processing of uh, news documents into stories uh, as a batch, uh, which then can be uh, integrated with uh, already existing clusters. Uh, online, online clustering takes uh, an oncoming stream of news documents where each uh, document is individually ranked against the existing news clusters in order to find the best ranked cluster for that document or uh, to create a new cluster. Uh, regarding recent batch clustering approaches, uh, I'll give just a quick overview of each of these works. So starting off with, uh, with news lens, uh, news lens constructs its, uh, uh, its uh, stories by uh, extracting keywords from uh, each article in the news batch. 
uh, and then linking those articles to a community detection algorithm in those keywords. Uh, then, that's for specific representations for new string clustering, uh, follows Newsland's work uh, and implements uh, both uh, a sparse approach through TFIDF Bagelford's document representations, as well as uh, DocTuVec dense representation approach. Uh, finally, batch clustering for multilingual streaming extend the previous two, two approaches into a multilingual setting uh, by uh, processing batches of articles into monolingual topics first. So top, um, topics that have on, that use only a single language. So monolingual language, monolingual Spanish, etc. Uh, and then use uh, a fine-tuned multilingual distilled model uh, to link topics across languages. Uh, on the other hand, regarding uh, systems based on online clustering, uh, multilingual clustering of streaming news uh, approach to this task by processing the stream of uh, multilingual documents into monolingual and then cross-lingual clusters, uh, where each document is first associated to, uh, to a monolingual cluster through sparse features like, uh, like uh, the entities, the lemmas, and uh, the tokens itself. Uh, themselves, uh, and then cross-lingual clusters are computed by linking uh, different monolingual clusters through uh, cross-lingual word embeddings. Um, finally, event-driven uh, new stream clustering using entity or contextual embeddings uh, proposed on one is on, uh, on the non parametric means algorithm. Uh, their approach uses both sparse and dense features, and they focus on using a, a fine-tuned entity for English. Uh, so just to make a brief balance of the previous methods, most of them only evaluate for English, and uh, the monolingual systems that are represented here, so uh, uh, for multilingual streaming and multilingual questioning of streaming news, are both heavily dependent on language-specific features, such as the, the entities of a given document uh, or, or TFIDF weights. Uh, and those approaches perform um, probably in a multilingual scenario that uh, includes low resource languages. So they are also hard to extend to, to resource languages. Uh, and that brings us to our system proposal, which uh, is uh, basically as this. Uh, we propose a system that is able to cluster documents uh, across languages for which there are uh, pretend multilingual contextual embeddings uh, while uh, maintaining performance for monolingual scenarios. More specifically, uh, our contributions are to develop a system that is able to cluster documents without depending on features such as the entities and the TFIDF, which also add error to the system. Uh, we show that the use of uh, multilingual contextual embeddings as the main representation uh, improves clustering quality. Uh, we also propose a method to train a classifier for merging similar clusters in an online setting uh, and show its importance in obtaining state-of-the-art uh, results for multilingual clustering. Uh, finally, we uh, show that our system performs well uh, on not only on the, on the main languages that have uh, been used for training, but also languages that have not been seen during training. Uh, so uh, essentially a zero, uh, zero shot in this clustering scenario. And we report results for those uh, languages, in this case, Chinese, Russian, uh, French, Italian, Slovenian, and Croatian. Um, moving on to the clustering algorithm, uh, our, our main focus here was to depend as little as possible in language-specific language features to process articles for language not seen uh, during the training, as mentioned earlier, uh, and without having a considerable performance loss for the, the main languages. Um, our system is composed by uh, four main steps, which are uh, to obtain the document representations, uh, to compute the, the best ranked cluster for uh, a given document, to decide uh, if a document is accepted by uh, the best ranked cluster and enters it or not, and finally to merge uh, clusters that pertain to the same story and that grow, may grow closer in time, which we will also um, see in detail uh, here, uh, further. Um, 
while uh, previous approaches were bound to the specific definition of the language for each document due to the, the limitations, in our case, we use a representation for each document that does not depend on the language, uh, which means we do not uh, need to make extra steps like uh, having monolingual and cross lingual representations. Uh, and uh, uh, in, the, in this case, uh, our um, documents are composed by two kinds of representations. Um, so a set of dense vector, uh, vectors, which we label as DR, uh, that correspond to the contextual representation of the document, uh, and a temporal representation, which is uh, labeled as the timestamp. Um, to obtain this uh, model, uh, which is a model available in the high interface library that aligns text at the centers level into a, uh, into a shared semantic space. Uh, so similar sentences in a different way will be closely mapped in the vector space. Um, and this model supports over 50 languages and it doesn't require uh, the specification of the, of the input language. Regarding the representations, uh, the, the first paragraph uh, representation uh, cor um, corresponds directly to the, uh, sorry, I don't think I introduced the, the representation that I used. So uh, we concretely, um, concretely for the context of representations, uh, we use the, the body and the title of the documents, uh, the first paragraph, and the title plus the first paragraph concatenated. Uh, so for these representations, uh, the first paragraph corresponds directly to the output of the model's encoder, while for the other representations, we perform in between the output vectors of each uh, segment of the, um, of the text. So in the case of the body, we first segment the body into the respective paragraphs, and then for each paragraph, we uh, compute a, a representation uh, and all of those representations have been uh, averaged to obtain uh, a general representation for that component of the document. Uh, for the temporal representation, we follow uh, previous work and use uh, the temporal uh, the temporal uh, and use the temporal representation of the document as the timestamp at the level of the day. Uh, so when we compose uh, documents uh, times clusters times with the Gaussian similarity between two, two timestamps in order to have an idea of what is the temporal distance between the the document that has entered the stream uh, the, the cluster stream and the cluster that is uh, currently being evaluated. Uh, as an additional remark, we did not uh, use the title alone as a feature because in a real use case scenario, there is a significant amount of uh, news documents that enter the system without a title. That is uh, also problematic if you want to, to represent them alone by the title. Uh, speaking of clusters, uh, clusters follow uh, pretty much the same schematic of representations being divided between uh, contextual and temporal representations with each cluster keeping three centroids for each of these components. Uh, so this uh, corresponds to the average uh, of uh, each of the accepted documents representations. Uh, and uh, while the document only has one timestamp, which corresponds to its publication date, uh, each cluster maintains three timestamps, which correspond to the mean timestamp of all documents, uh, the timestamp of its newest document, and the timestamp of its uh, oldest document. Uh, so before into uh, before we go into depth regarding the next steps, let's just do a quick overview of uh, what is the clustering process. So let's see the following example where we have here three clusters: C1, C2, and C3. Uh, just to confirm, can, can you see my mouse? Yes. 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 All right. Thank you. Um, so we have uh, C1, C2, and C3, which are already formed, and each have uh, their own documents. So C1 has two documents, and C2 and C3 are, 
uh, both have uh, three documents here. Uh, let's say that a new document enters the stream. So in this case, D9. Um, in our consuming pipeline, this document will first obtain its uh, contextual representations from the digital use model, and then it will rank its similarity to the clusters uh, in the cluster pool. In this case, D9 uh, compares itself to C1, C2, and C3. And it will determine that C2 is the question most likely to be a good fit for this document since uh, it has the best score uh, in the ranking step. So we proceed to the Uh, the C2. Uh, so let's see each of these steps in detail. Uh, starting off with the ranking model. Uh, after computing the, the representations for the document, we compare uh, a document, uh, this uh, document against each of the clusters in the cluster pool. Uh, so, to determine the similarity between the document and each cluster, we will compute the ranking score of that cluster. And uh, in this case, our uh, ranking model takes the form of a ranks SVM model, uh, and we uh, use uh, a new data set to learn the SVM weights. Uh, regarding to, uh, just to, uh, a quick example for the training, for each document, a uh, positive sample is generated corresponding to, to, uh, to its health cluster, and then uh, up to 20 example, uh, to empty negative examples are also generated uh, in order to train the, the rank SVM model. Uh, the, ranking, uh, the ranking score uh, is obtained uh, by computing the similarity from uh, between each of the document features uh, against the cluster features. So the body and uh, the body plus the title is compared against the, the, the cluster's body plus title centroid. The first paragraph is compared against the first paragraph uh, centroid, and the first paragraph plus title is also compared. Uh, all of this using the, uh, the cosine similarity. Additionally, the first paragraph and the first paragraph plus title uh, are compared to the to the body plus title representation of the cluster in order to have an idea of uh, uh, how they um, of how they score, uh, given into account the general representation of the document. Um, uh, then the document timestamps, uh, the document timestamp is compared against each of the cluster timestamps uh, using the, the Gaussian similarity between uh, each of these uh, each of these pairs of timestamps, and each of these features has uh, an associated weight provided by the by the rank SVM. Which then decides the the weight, the the influence of uh, the features uh, regarding the the final uh, ranking score. Um, so for the acceptance model, uh, after uh, the the best uh, ranked cluster has been uh, has been found, has been found. Uh, the, the acceptance model uh, takes, the, uh, takes the, the form of a linear SVM from which we learn the, the weights and the respective bias, uh, and, uh, which is, and this linear SVM is then used to determine if, uh, um, if a candidate document should enter this best ranked cluster or not. So uh, after this uh, best ranked cluster has been determined, uh, the um, the acceptance model uh, computes the, 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 the respective acceptance score, which is given by a similar schematic as the, as the, the last step. So uh, the main differences are that this uses the, not, not only the bias provided by the linear SVM, but also the, the weights are different since, since this is a, a, completely different, a completely different task. Uh, while the goal of the previous task was to rank the clusters and determine which one was the best, uh, here we're just uh, try, uh, trying to determine if this uh, score is uh, greater, if the score for the for the cluster is uh, greater than zero or not, and if it is, 
uh, then the document is accepted. Otherwise, the document creates a new cluster. Uh, regarding the training, uh, for each document, gener uh, we generate a positive and a, and a negative sample, uh, which are then provided to to the to the linear SPM um, uh, in order to to determine the weights and the biases. Uh, finally, the last step is the merge model. Uh, so after um, the document has been accept, um, accepted into a cluster, we take the initial cluster candidates from the ranking process and evaluate them against the changed cluster, but uh, wise through another SVM model uh, that we call the cluster merge model. Uh, and the documents from each cluster with the positive merge uh, are inserted into the, the source cluster. This process can happen multiple times. So imagine we have uh, five clusters in our cluster pool uh, and one of them has been changed. The other four clusters can, uh, from the other four clusters, let's say that the first one uh, joins the, the main cluster uh, and applies its changes. Then it is possible that another cluster further, further in the process also joins the this um, this changed cluster. So it can be um, an interactive process similar to what other works have proposed, like uh, uh, like uh, Miranda and Alia, uh, before did the uh, proposed the domino top links schematic where um, a cluster could join um, it, uh, could uh, substitute its monorail clusters and uh, and uh, change the schematics of uh, subsequent clusters. Uh, and the intuition behind this process is to find the clusters that started off distant, uh, but grew similar enough with, the, with time uh, to pertain to the same uh, story, and then merge them. Uh, this can happen throughout the, the clustering processes, especially in the beginning, uh, where uh, there are few documents in the system and the acceptance model may uh, mistakenly assign separate clusters to documents that should be together. Uh, then as those clusters grow, they can end up in uh, similar points of the vector space, which means that they should be merged. Uh, for this uh, model, we use uh, basically the same set of features uh, as uh, the other two models, uh, and but we have uh, two uh, respective features uh, from both clusters uh, corresponding to the cluster size of each cluster, which uh, helps the model distinguish between smaller and uh, bigger clusters. Um, and uh, from uh, from this, the, once again, the cosine similarity and the cosine similarity are composed for, for the respective for the contextual features and the temporal uh, features. Um, moving on to the experiments and uh, starting off with the data set, uh, we follow previous work on this, uh, on this uh, task and evaluate our system on a discussing data set that's proposed by uh, Rupnik and Dahlia. Uh, and this dataset contains mostly documents in, uh, in English, uh, Spanish, and German, but also a significant amount of documents in other languages. So in this case, Chinese, um, Slovenian, um, Russian, French, Italian, and uh, Croatian. Um, this, set, this dataset is composed by uh, 34,687 uh, articles, and it is divided into a training set, which contains around uh, 20,000 documents and the test set, which contains about um, 13 documents. Uh, the, training, uh, the training set begins with news uh, in December 2013, uh, and ends in, uh, and, uh, yeah, it ends in, in November uh, 2014. While the test set starts where the training set left off, so November 2014, and then in August 2015. And this uh, ensures that the stories seen in the training set are, are granted with different from the stories seen in the test set. So the system won't just learn to uh, uh, evaluate the stories seen in training. It will really learn to cluster news, uh, uh, news stories. Um, into clusters. Um, so 
uh, moving on to the to the actual results, just to give uh, a quick overview of the metrics used. Uh, here we are using the the standard F1 uh, and the V cube F1. Where uh, for uh, just to clarify, for the V cube F1, the V cube precision of the document corresponds to the proportion of the documents in the inside the cluster, where the uh, where the cluster label uh, is the same, uh, and the V cube recall corresponds to the proportion of the documents uh, with, uh, that have the same label in the whole data set uh, that appear uh, inside of its cluster. Uh, so in the case of, uh, of monolingual clustering, um, we, uh, uh, our system is on par with, uh, with Miranda and uh, for both uh, English and German, uh, but it is uh, out, out based on the, on the Spanish metric. And in pretty much all of those, we uh, are outpaced by, uh, by uh, Matic Swinger's system, uh, except for German, uh, where we have 99.0 uh, sets uh, in the standard F1 um, that beats uh, the, the other systems. Uh, our uh, cost of distribution uh, roughly matches the other systems, uh, with English uh, having a greater cost of generation which, which uh, indicates sparsity of the, of the documents. Uh, for the cross the results, uh, we achieve state-of-the-art performance with uh, our B-cubed uh, F1 of our best model, uh, achieving the increase of, uh, of, uh, of uh, 8.04 points with uh, a B-cubed score of 90.10. Uh, compared to Matthias Winger's 82.06, uh, while the standard F1 achieves uh, an increase of 10.72 uh, 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 points, um, while the Matthias Winger's have uh, 86.49, so a final result of 97.21. Um, our uh, generated clusters uh, uh, quantity is a bit higher, than what was achieved, uh, what was achieved by Matthias Winger, which uh, may indicate that there there is a significant amount of clusters that have uh, a few documents, um, and uh, we also uh, performed the, an, an ablation study, which is reflected in these three lines. So we started off with uh, our, our ranking, uh, our system only composed by the ranking and the acceptance step. Uh, and uh, having four features, which were uh, the, the body plus the title for the contextual representation and the three timestamps. Uh, then we added, uh, uh, just uh, before we continue, uh, that's already achieved, um, Significant gains with around six points gained on for on both the uh, BQ F1 and the standard F1. Um, then over that we uh, trained our models with the additional uh, features pertaining to the first paragraph and the title, uh, which also achieved uh, a slight increase of around one one point. Um, 1.42 points for the standard F1 and uh, 1.22 points for the uh, for the BQF1, um, and this also led to uh, to a significant increase on the on the amount of clusters, and uh, in order to to try and uh, and. Uh, 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 counter that increase, we uh, implemented the, the merge step. Uh, by by turning uh, an additional model, and that uh, gave us the the best uh, performance, which was achieved uh, by a by a slight increase on the on the VQ of F1, and uh, a significant increase on the standard F1, corresponding to uh, around three point five points. Um, Finally, uh, on zero shot clustering. So just to recall, there was no data seen uh, from uh, any of these languages except for 10 documents uh, of uh, Chinese, uh, which were uh, reflected right here, I think. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so the other five languages have uh, no documents uh, present during the training steps for each of the models. Uh, and yet, uh, we achieved high F1 scores for um, 
for uh, Chinese, French, Russian, and Italian, uh, while uh, Slovenian and Croatian gave uh, initial uh, not not so good results, uh, but um, better than we expected as well. Uh, do take in mind, however, that this. Um, these six, uh, these six languages were evaluated with uh, a small set of, uh, of test documents. So it's, it's still a, a work in progress that, uh, that needs to, that, that uh, should be probably evaluated against uh, 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 greater data sets in the, in the future when those uh, data sets are um, Nevertheless, those uh, within those as uh, initial uh, F1 scores for these languages, as our previous models, especially um, the the model before we uh, we implemented much step, achieved uh, the results uh, achieved were not uh, so good uh, as this. Uh, so, in conclusion. Uh, we presented a question model that produces state-of-the-art results at a multilingual level uh, without depending on features such as uh, TFAVR and entities, entities uh, depending on, on the language. And, uh, maintain, and we maintain performance at uh, a monolingual level. Um, and we also demonstrate that uh, it is possible to improve results by utilizing contextual embeddings to represent documents at a cross level level and how a linear SVM can be trained in order to perform this task. Um, by reducing the complexity of the, of the questioning space, we also motivate future research on topics such as questioning with user feedback uh, taken into account and high performance uh, vector search in order to improve uh, uh, questioning speed and scalability. Uh, our system also enables computational e efficiency by allowing most operations to be paralyzed. Uh, and as a final note, uh, the code to reproduce the, the experiments shown will be made available as uh, open source. And uh, I think that's all. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Joan, for this very nice uh, presentation. First of all, uh, my apologies because I, we had a, a connection drop. Uh, in between, so the recording might be a little bit uh, affected by that. I think that the presentation itself was not, uh, which is good. So regarding questions, um, you can either uh, ask them with your microphone, of course, or if you prefer, you can type them in the chat. Um, so while people are thinking of uh, some questions or maybe typing them, I have uh, one question for you as well. So your model comprises a, a, one of the sub-models is a merge model, which decides if two clusters should or not uh, be merged at some point. My question is, um, given that you don't have, let's say, a, a split model or something like mm -hmm. that, don't you have the risk that, and since this is an online clustering algorithm, uh, don't you have the risk that after a sufficiently large amount of time, uh, all the clusters have merged into a one or two or just let's say few uh, huge clusters. Uh, yes, that's a, uh, that's a very good question, and uh, that um, that scenario actually uh, happened in in one of the of one of our uh, first uh, attempts on uh, building the the merge algorithm. So that that is effectively. Um, uh, a significant risk. So, uh, what? Uh, let me just go back to the um, to the to the match model. So, um, in this case, uh, what we found was that the either the in a in a real scenario, the topics can be either uh, um, significantly um, distant in uh, in. Uh, in, regarding the, the contextual embeddings, uh, but also the, the cluster size uh, feature also helps uh, to, to distinguish bit, uh, Uh, learn uh, to uh, merge um, to to merge uh, small clusters more 
more, more uh, to increase the likelihood of much small clusters rather than uh, than large clusters. Uh, additionally, the the timestamp features also help. Um, uh, so, how do you say it? So, uh, also help um, to to supervise the the process uh, by uh, by uh, distinguishing the 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 older clusters from uh, uh, from uh, recently generated news. So typically, a, a cluster that is uh, that has uh, uh, recent news, say from. Uh, let's say that the cluster has been created with news from uh, from the last uh, fr from uh, say from today, and it's compared against a cluster that was like uh, like one month old. Then it will most likely incur a, a penalty due to the edge of that cluster. Uh, I'm not sure if that completely answers the your question. Yes, but, uh, uh, it does. Although of course you always have that risk, but you have strategies yeah. that uh, mitigate. Uh, the risk, which is, of course, good. Um, so we have a question from Juan Um He asks uh, uh, if you could clarify how new from, clusters uh, are asks, Can you clarify how new clusters are generated on the test set? Uh, so uh, to give us uh, uh, any insights, we start off with, um, with uh, a few uh, documents that are not uh, um, that serve as our baseline for the cluster pool. Uh, so um, imagine the first four documents that enter the system will be each uh, our uh, base clusters. Uh, and uh, then when uh, when a document uh, enter when a new document enters the system, it will be rated uh, against each of the clusters that already exist. So let's say that we have those uh, those four clusters. And uh, the the new document um, does the system and uh, evaluates if each of these features uh, and determines uh, that the the best ranked mo uh, the best ranked cluster was, for example, the the, the cluster two. Uh, then it will be evaluated by the by the acceptance mod uh, and. Uh, the, if the if the document uh, is uh, is accepted by the by the acceptance mod, then it will join that cluster. That cluster will then have two documents. Otherwise, if it's not accepted, then it will it will split. Uh, it, not, uh, not split. Sorry. Uh, it will create its own cluster, and uh, we'll have that cluster in the cluster pool. And any other document that uh, that enters the cluster pool uh, that enters the the, the streaming. Um, the the streaming pool then will be evaluated against against each of those clusters. That process uh, repeats on and on in time, uh, well infinitely since this is an an online algorithm and uh, and uh, the and uh, the clusters uh, grow in time. Uh, there's something that I I don't think I mentioned. Uh, during the, the presentation, which is uh, clusters that are uh, too old in time uh, are archived, uh, so they they will not uh, be able to to be uh, evaluated posteriorly. But that only happens to the oldest clusters, and the system usually still takes a, a great amount of uh, of clusters in its cluster pool. Uh, So let me just check the question. Yeah, we had one more question, but uh, I think that you answered to that. Yeah. In this case, when a document is not accepted in any cluster, it creates a, a, a new cluster. Yeah. Uh, Let's see if we have more questions. Yeah. Well, I have, I have one more. Uh, Go ahead. Yes. So um, basically, you have uh, two models, or you have three, but now I'm, I'm uh, focusing on two of them. So the ranking model and the acceptance model. Um, so the first one basically finds the, 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 clo the, the cluster, which is uh, the most similar to the document. And the second one, the acceptance, decides whether this document is sufficiently similar to be part of the cluster or not. My question is, uh, could you or have you tried to merge these models 
like having um, so your ranking model could instead of always uh, assign let's say a document to a cluster saying no this document does not belong to any of the clusters that I know uh, have you tried it or um, I imagine that probably this approach works better but anyway I'm curious about this uh, let's say end to end or one step approach if you have tried it or not yeah um actually in, uh, that's also a very good question um in this case uh we have not tried it uh but uh previous works uh, often used um a rough threshold so imagine they um each uh, each uh, cluster produced um, a score uh on the ranking step and then um the the system has um a manually, hand, uh, manually found uh, threshold, which was often found by, by grid search, uh, which would then uh, cut uh, the, the clusters, the clusters and only evaluate uh, if uh, the, the clusters exceeded that threshold. Um, but yeah, in this case, we, we have not tried that approach. Okay. Thank you, Joan. Uh, let's see if we have any more questions. If not, I have a final one, which is a question that I don't like very much, but it's uh, maybe a question that you might be asked when you present this work at the conference, which is you, you used um, SVM holes on top of uh, contextual embeddings which I believe were extracted by a transformer. I don't know if they were or not, but have you tried an end-to-end -end approach? Um, so like using um, a transformer directly for, for each of the tasks? And if not, why did you uh, choose the SVM? Um, we have, uh, well, we have not, uh, we have not tried the, that approach uh, yet uh, in this case. Our bet with the with the SVM was mostly based on uh, on uh, what we found from uh, from previous works uh, and uh, also the results that we that we obtained from the uh, from uh, from our ex uh, from our initial experiences. Uh, but uh, I I I believe that uh, that that kind of approach could also be implemented successfully. Uh, if one had the, the resources to, to train uh, uh, such a model from uh, from scratch, uh, in this case, since uh, uh, since uh, the the news clustering task is also uh, well more more limited in the in the terms of scope of text and thematics that we are working, that kind of uh, model would also have to be tailored uh, for uh, for this kind of task. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Joan, for this answer. Thank you. Personally, I don't believe that everything should be deep learning and in case of performers, <laughs> but that's uh, there's a big hype now, so that's a question that uh, yeah, that's that's really come up on uh, on text to uh, study. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it seems like there are no more questions. So uh, I, I think I, I can stop the recording.